Good morning, my name is Lydia and I'm a librarian at Carrollton Public Library. This is our second in a series of three Zoom webinars about our database, Reference Solutions, formerly Reference USA. The first webinar was an overview of Reference Solutions and you can view it at any time on our library webpage. We'll be recording today's session as well for future viewing. I'm joined by Diana Slavinsky, our community engagement librarian who'll be providing tech support Diana, would you like to guide us in the chat features? Absolutely. Good morning. If you're joining us from your laptop or a desktop computer, hopefully getting onto Zoom is relatively straightforward. I went ahead and put a message in there. I'll say good morning, and you'll have a chat box that hopefully identifies that you have a chat. Uh, item that has popped up. Usually you'll see a little bubble that says chat and maybe a one in red. If you've joined from a phone or a tablet, it may be in the upper area. If not, hover your mouse around and look around for that feature. Feel free to interact with us and ask questions in that box. We do have the Q&A also enabled if you would like to ask questions there, but the chat honestly is the most straightforward and easy way to converse with us and feel free to ask questions. You can also, if you go to the upper right, you should have view options. This will allow you to change your screen around based on your own preferences. So you can view the slideshow and open up your chat area to your preferences. Thank you, Diana. Today's webinar is Reference Solutions Database for Business Expansion. This highly customizable database tool is accessible at both Carrollton Public Libraries. It's on our public computers and online remotely with a library card by first logging into your account, then going to online resources. It's my pleasure to welcome and introduce today's presenters. We are thrilled to have Bill Carlson, the Data Axel Reference Solutions Customer Success Manager, accompanied by Andrew Roussel, also with Data Axel. I learn something new every time I attend a Reference Solutions webinar and I can't wait to experience today's discoveries along with you all. Bill? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking time out of your day to join us today. We're going to cover the Data Axle Reference Solutions database, and we're really looking at business expansion. So whether your uh, up your customers would be other businesses or perhaps consumers. I'll show you how you could obtain information in regards to both of those types of customers today. I do want to cover a few housekeeping items before we get started. First of all, Reference Solutions is also your home key, so you can select this at any time to get back to this home page. We do offer webinars on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Anyone can sign up for those. And under the Learning Center, we have some great information available for you as well. Let me go ahead and open this and I'll show you. We have our contact information. We do have patrons that contact us Monday through Friday. So certainly feel free if, if you would need some assistance, you can always contact the library or feel free to contact us our contact information is, is shown here in several spots. So you can always feel free to reach out to us. But the information I wanted to show you specifically is under this marketing and training material. So I'll open that up. And on this far right hand column, we have our database overviews. So we have one that's specific to all of our business related databases, one for our consumer, and then one that's all inclusive then a breakdown of each and every one of our modules. So if you were perhaps in the US business database module and you needed to uh, have some assistance, you could refer to this document. It will walk you through how to set up a search. Certainly feel free to use any of these. We also have a data dictionary for the business and consumer data. So if there were an element in a record and you weren't quite certain what that referred to, you could certainly always refer to these data dictionaries to probably find your answer. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I wanna to return to the, to the dashboard here because I do wanna show you a couple of other items here. Down here, we do offer access to our app. 
So if you would like to upload our app to your tablet or to your smartphone, certainly feel free to do so. You would have access to two of those modules. That would be the U.S. business and the U.S. consumer lifestyles. When you go to launch that, you would put in your zip code at which point in time you would get a, uh, a listing of libraries in the area because it does do a 25 mile radius. You would scroll through that list, click on the library that's yours, and then at that time, input your library card number to get access. And then down here at the very bottom are our personal accounts. We added this as a selection option that folks could use because we were told by our library partners that not in every situation did someone want to be able to download records, but rather save them and come back to them at a more appropriate time for them. So once you've registered, you can log in and you can save virtually any of these nine, except for one, the jobs and internships. With this one, you can email yourself results, but the, all these others, you can certainly send you, uh, save those as as a, as a uh, search and then come back to it at whatever point in time is good for you. There's no limit. It won't be flushed after a period of time. In fact, there's a different update date for these various modules. Let me explain that. So Data Axle Reference Solutions is located in Omaha, Nebraska, and we have roughly 1,100 people that work here. And they come, there's a group of those folks, about 350 of them that compile the, the business database by call verifying these businesses once a year to verify information like, of course, the name of the business, the address information. Since they answer the phone, we know the phone number is correct. But we also capture information like number of employees, line of business that they're in, if they happen to know the square footage for that office or that building. We capture that information and make it available in that record along with some additional insights about that business. So we're doing that every week. We're pushing out all those updates that we've made Thursday into Friday morning. So 52 times a year, this is being updated. Whereas the Canadian business, this is updated monthly. Our jobs and internships, this is updated daily. Our new business filings that we're getting through the Secretary of State's office, we're certainly getting uh, utility hookup information as well. We're pushing that information out uh, weekly. Our U.S. healthcare, our standard white pages, our consumer lifestyles, and the Canadian white pages, those are all updated monthly. And then we have our U.S. new movers, new homeowners. That information is coming through our license agreement with the United States Postal Service's national change of address. This information is being updated weekly. Certainly any of these uh, database modules can certainly be used. The processes, the tools that I sh I'll show you, they're the same no matter which of these modules you might go into. Certainly the filters that you use might be slightly different, but otherwise everything works the same. In fact, let me go ahead and, and share with you the US business database first. I'll open that up and whenever I do, any module, whenever I've opened it, I'm always going to come to this quick search page. Great for finding one company record. Maybe you want to look up company ABC in whatever city and state. Remember, you can do this across the United States. Any city and state, you want to look at record up and get just that one record. You could certainly do that using that company name option. You could even look up an executive. Maybe, maybe you uh, know of this executive that's left the company they used to be with. You're not quite certain where they've gone to. You could certainly try that executive first name, last name search. Hopefully you can narrow it down to a city and state. And then I can always do a reverse phone number lookup if I'd like. I do want to show you one of our tools, and I'll show it to you in a couple of different ways. Let's just go with the city of Carrollton. State of Texas. 
And I'm gonna view those results. And whenever I view results from the quick search page, it's only going to show me uh, verified records. And we have about 16 million of those verified records. So it will give me those verified records in Carrollton. I'm gonna view those results. Notice I have a little over 7,000 businesses across the city. The tool I wanna to show you is this charts tool. It will help make sense of the types of businesses that are represented in your community. I'll select the charts option. Notice it's pulling up the SIC code. If you're not familiar with that code, it's the standard industrial classification code. It's an old coding system that, that has been in existence since the 40s. We continue to use that when Uncle Sam was utilizing that information. It was only a four digit code at its longest. We've actually made it a six digit code at a minimum, and in some cases, even a nine digit code so that you can get very granular using this code. So what, it's, what the system has done for me in this chart perspective is it's given me the top seven SIC codes across your community. In this case, Restaurants sit in the top spot, followed by physicians and surgeons, dentists, insurance, attorneys, nurse practitioner, and last but not least, churches. That's my top seven. I can also scroll down and get a full report. Notice it's 63 pages in length. It gives me that primary SIC code. There's that six digit number I was referring to the definition for that number, and then the total number of records. So in any of these situations, if I wanted to get into uh, this automobile repairing and service, if I wanted to get into these 62 records, I could click on that number and it will take me right to that group. And then I could go about doing whatever I needed to do with that information. So know that that's always available to you. You can also change this up if you would prefer to look at this based on the zip codes across the community. You could certainly do that. You could look at it from a sales volume standpoint, even the number of employees by range. So let's take a look at that. So of those businesses, almost 50% of the businesses across Carrollton employ one to four employees followed by five to nine, 10 to 19, you get the idea. All of this information can be printed off or it can be made part of a PowerPoint presentation. So know that you can always overlay whatever information you're looking at and get it in a similar fashion. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here in a moment. I'm gonna go back to my results. We got there simply by doing that city state lookup. I'm going to revise that search. It's going to take me back to that quick search page. Most of the time we know people are going to go right to advanced search. And by the way, additional filters goes to the same place, advanced search. So I can open up that tab and I have these various filter options on the far left-hand column here that I can begin using. And I do like to point out, for example, company name here. We saw under quick search where I could look at one company by name. This would allow me to look at multiple companies by name and I can add them one at a time here. So if IBM were one of those companies that I wanted to look at, I could add that. If Delta were another one of those that I wanted to look at, I could add that. I can keep adding as many companies by name and then select whatever geography is important for me. Otherwise, we'll always give you the name of that company. We'll always give you this executive information where we can get it. When we're making those calls to verify that information, we always ask, who's the owner or manager of that business? So we try and capture this information in those phone calls and make that available. Business type, we know that people use that a lot simply because they wanna drive in certain types of businesses. So with this keyword search option, 
as it notes here, you can just put in restaurants if you want to, or hotels, or dry cleaners, or you know, colleges, universities, whatever it is that you want to look at by type, for profit and not for profit. I'll come back and show you an example of that in a moment. I do like to point out this major industry group, which is just the SIC codes. By the way, as it notes here, we also have another coding system that Uncle Sam actually replaced the SICs with. It's called the NAICS codes, North American Industrial Classification System. So certainly either way you can get to uh, the type of business data that you need. I happen to prefer the SIC codes and the major industry group is only the SIC codes. Notice you can tell the system, search only those businesses that that, that, that is their primary line of business. Most businesses, think about Walmart you know, and all of the, the different lines of business that they have under that umbrella. Their primary line of business is a department store, but they have grocery, they have automotive, they have garden, pharmacy. Businesses oftentimes have more than one type of business that they do. So depending again on how specific you need it to be, you could certainly designate only those businesses that that's their primary line of business. In fact, in the Dallas area, I have a niece that lives there and she had contacted me. She knew that I worked with business information through public libraries. She had a Dallas public library card. She wanted to find businesses that would uh, do work for the water damage that she had sustained at her home when the big freeze uh, occurred in the area. So all I did was have her open up this section and we went right into construction. So there are those three codes, here are their definitions. And then I took her into general contractors because that's where she needed to go. And then it, notice it then breaks it out into that four digit number. So this was as granular as it would get under the use by the federal government. We added two more codes to that to make it a six digit code. And notice here, here is my water damage restoration. Not that any general contractor couldn't do that, but she wanted someone that they do this type of work day in and day out. She's getting ready to sell her home. So she wanted to make certain that it was done right. So all we had to do was select that. And of course, drive in that that's their primary line of business. And then we just did Dallas. So for our, for our metro area. So it can be that specific. And this is a nice way to be able to stair step into the type of information that you might ultimately need. I'm gonna remove that. Let's talk about geography slightly here. I will show you this map-based search tool, which is available in many of our modules. This can be a great tool depending on, on the type of search you might wanna do in an area. Certainly all these others kind of speak for themselves. So same thing with phone here size of business. So we look at this from the number of employees standpoint as well as sales volume. I had shown you in that chart where we could break that down by those various ranges as it relates to number of employees. So we're asking that in every one of our verification phone calls. How many employees do you have? About 72% of the businesses will give us an exact number. Those that don't, we look at the type of business they're in, that SIC code, we look at the type of their business that they're in, and then we look at their peers in the area to assign a range. So if you see an exact number, you know we got that in our call. If you see a range, you know we applied that because they did not respond to that question. And as it relates to sales volume, we learned a long time ago, you don't ask a private company how much money they're making and not have that call perhaps end suddenly. So we have a team that puts together an algorithm and they use data like number of employees, 
the line or lines of business that that company is in, the, the age of that business, how long have they been doing this? How long have they been in business? We also look at where they're doing business at because there are plenty of variables that we have to consider when it comes to that. You know, everything from cost of payroll and taxes and, and, and heating and cooling costs, uh, the, the variables related to that area, you know, doing business in downtown Manhattan, certainly much more expensive than doing business in downtown Omaha, Nebraska, for example. So we build all of that into that algorithm that then produces that modeled number. If it's a publicly traded company, we would get that information in regards to that sales volume from their 10K report. So no, you can certainly search by those two filters often used. You might wanna search by ownership. Maybe you only want to look at privately owned companies versus those that might be public. Maybe you wanna look at businesses that are single locations versus part of a, of a larger network. You could certainly do that. Just depends on what you need to do. Home-based businesses, we do have those records in the database. I know that sometimes when people are doing a search in a, let's say a couple of zip codes, they may want to exclude home-based businesses or they may want to look at just those types of businesses. You could do it either way. Only those home-based businesses or you could exclude them. If you choose to do nothing and you're looking at businesses in just a, a zip code or two, you may in fact find those home-based businesses in your records. Financial data, we'll always give you that where that's available. Special selects, I do like to point out years in the database. Sometimes it can be a challenge getting this year established information, but we know how long we've had them in our database. So you could always drive in. If you wanted to see those newer businesses, let's say over the last three years that have opened up in a particular city or in a county or in some zip codes, you could certainly do that and just drive in those results. Maybe it's by a certain type of business that you want to see them. No matter, you could certainly do that. You may also prefer to find some of those older businesses. If 12 years were your high water mark, you could just grab all of those years and then produce just those records. No, you could do it either way. Professionals, all or one. Again, this was another filter that we added because our, our library partners had shared with us that in some cases, people were creating lists that they intended on doing some, sending out mailers to those businesses in that, on that list. With that in mind, if they were searching an area that had a lot of doctors, you saw in the, in the chart for Carrollton that there, there were, uh, they were in that second position for the most populated businesses in the area, if in fact you only wanted to reach one primary doctor or one primary attorney, you could switch this from all to one and drive in fewer records. Then your mailing, your mailing campaign will cost less, obviously. So certainly a great way to filter if that would be helpful for you. And then we give you uh, a number of ways to omit information. For example, we have ATM machines in our records for those ATM machines in our database. We also have, uh, you may be familiar with red box uh, kiosks. Generally, at least here in Omaha, we find them outside of the Walgreens locations. If you wanted to omit those, you could certainly do that. It's as simple as opening up that option and then putting in ATM if that was what you wanted to omit. Then the system will come up with that SIC code and that description, which I can click on and add in the selected field here. So there is that SIC code for automated teller machines. I can simply select that. And then as long as I've left this in play, as long as I haven't removed it, I'll never see those automated teller machines output. 
in my records. So know that you can certainly use that option. Maybe you even want to omit previously saved searches. You could do that as well. It's completely up to you. Let me do this. I'm gonna come back to the keyword search and we're gonna look at this real quickly. Maybe I had some type of product. I helped a lady in Orange County, Florida, the Orlando area. She was working for an Orlando-based company and was selling uh, a product to restaurants. Now she couldn't sell to any of the large chains, uh, the McDonald's, the Burger Kings, the, the, she couldn't sell to the Applebee's or Chili's, but she could sell to mom and pop restaurants. So we identified restaurants first and foremost, of course, so there's my restaurants. I'm going to search for that SIC code and that description. There it is. I'll add that below. And notice, I mentioned earlier that we have this, at a minimum, six-digit code. Notice here, I can take you to steakhouses. That's a seven-digit now. And it, it's like that until we get down to the number nine here, and then we switch to alpha. So you can get very specific as it relates to the types of restaurants you might wanna see, or maybe you want to get to certain chains of restaurants. You could certainly do that. Now it's a nine digit code. So uh, we will allow you to get very specific if you need to be. Now, she wanted to just look at restaurants, but what she wanted to do is she wanted to use number of employees as filters. So we opened up that option for her, and she wanted to identify those one to four and those five to nine. That was a the extent that she wanted to go. But then she also wanted to add in some sales volumes. So she wanted everything less than a million. And then it was just a matter of selecting, as I mentioned to you, under ownership, she wanted to identify those single locations. And at that point in time, all we had to do was open up. She wanted to start with Orange County. She had the entire state of Florida that she could work in. So all the counties across the state, but she wanted to start in Orange County. So at that point in time, all you have to do is grab, as we did for her, the state of Florida and then Orange County. So you can either scroll through this list or you can start to key in orange and the system will automatically go to that listing. Select it, now I'm ready to go. So this is my total universe of verified records. Notice it always defaults to those verifieds. We do have unverified records. The way a business record becomes unverified is after we have attempted to reach that business a dozen times throughout the course of two years. And we change up time of day, day of week. Our researchers are working Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. on on Saturday from 8 to 5 p.m. So you can see we're covering as many hours as possible there. We're capturing that information, trying to get that verification done. If we can't, after those attempts, we'll move it from the verified status into the unverified, unless of course we've learned that it's closed, then we'll move it here. So I'm looking at just those verified records. You could include unverifieds. Just because we're not confident that that business is still open, you may well live in that area and know that that business is still open. In fact, I'll even show you how you could update us about that. So I'm just looking at those verifieds at this point in time. Let's do an update count. So I have 1,900 of those types of businesses. Now, what I want to make certain of is that that's their primary line of business. So think about bowling alleys, for example. Oftentimes, they have a little restaurant in them. 
but their primary line of business has nothing to do with a restaurant. It's entertainment or bowling, right? So if you needed to be that specific, watch what happens to my count now. So it dropped it down to $17.99. Now in her case, she would still want those bowling alleys because they could be businesses that she could sell into. So since that was the case, we left those in play and here it was. So at this point in time, she would make a list and you can always download information. Notice it says you can download 400 records. So 400 records would be, uh, let's see, that would be eight pages of, of uh, records. So to do so, all you simply do is put a check mark there, grab all those records, then keep advancing. And there's 25 records per page. And I miss I misspoke, it'd be 16 pages. So you could go all the way to 16 pages and then do your download. I'm gonna stop here at 10. And there's my, we'll pretend that's 16. Then I can simply select my download. Comma delimited is what's identified here as most popular. And it's because it's friendly with making mailing labels. If you have that software on your computer, you could certainly use that comma delimited and be able to print off those mailing labels if you'd like to. Still drops it into a form of, of Excel. If you want the summary, it would include the name of that business, their address, phone. Additional elements would be that owner or manager, their name, title, how many employees they have, sales, volume, line of business, all of that information would be captured right here in this Excel document. And let me pull this across so you can see this. There it comes. And I have all of that information. Now I'm ready to go. I can get more records. So if I would like to add more records and have them all in one document, my page here is static. I can't add anything else to this. I can't go to the bottom and add more records, but you could if you opened up your own version of Excel and then simply come, come, come right up here in the upper left-hand corner between cell one and A, and select that, copy that information, then take it over to your Excel document, paste it there, minimize yours, come back here to my page, close it. It's always gonna leave you on this instructional page. Then you simply select the word back. At that point in time, you have to deselect these pages with all these check marks. Easiest way to do that is revise search. It doesn't forget how you built your search. Then you can view your results. It's cleared out all of those check marks. It's left you on page one. And then you just remember what page you left off on. If we'd actually done 16 pages, then I would go to page 17 and start there. So you get the idea how you could certainly do that. Then it's just a matter of selecting more of these records and selecting your download. So no, you can do all of that. I'm gonna revise my search because I do wanna show you some additional tools here. We charted earlier the entire community of Carrollton. Now I'm charting just these restaurants in Orange County, Florida. So the system has given me this breakdown based on that size information for those restaurants. And it tells me the top seven cities across Orange County with the number of rec restaurants that are there. Then you can uh, scroll down and see that entire listing. So no, you can utilize this information. If you would prefer, we know that we, we have this set up up to a million. So if you would prefer to know what zip codes the majority of these businesses are in, you could switch it up to that as well. And then get that top listing of those zip codes across the area. 
she wanted to be able to show her employer this information so that she was able to communicate with him exactly what she had for opportunities to sell their product to these restaurants. So no, you can do that. You can print that off. You can make that part of a PowerPoint presentation. She intended on printing that information off for her needs. I can also put this information on a density map. It's our heat map. So it takes all of that location-based information and then lays it out across the county. So as you can see, you get the idea, here's Orange County, it actually goes up into here and down to here. So here are, where you see those red areas, there are lots of restaurants in those areas where it's yellow, fewer, green even less, and of course, no color, no restaurants. Again, this was something else that she wanted to be able to show her boss. And I'm doing this just on uh, Orange County. If I would prefer, I could always go back to my results and I could revise this slightly. I can add more than one county if I would like. Maybe I want to add another county that's near to orange. So we have uh, Seminole. There's Seminole. And we have uh, Volusia as well. So I can add those additional counties. What is that going to do to my number here? So you can see now it's up over 3,000 when I add in these other two counties. I can view those results and I can put all of that information on the heat map. So it just depends on what you need to be able to do. So know that you can take advantage of this information anytime you would, you would like. The only limitation with the map is you have to have at least 50 records in play and, and it will not go beyond 50,000. So those are the only two limits. And let's do this. Let's go back here. Now I won't have any of those businesses in here because they're too small. So I'm going to add a business and I'll get rid of Seminole and Volusia and I'm going to do a company by name because I want to show you the parent tree. If you're looking at records uh, and there might be a parent tree, I'll add Arby's. Let's see, they must have some. Ooh, what the, oh, I know what I did. I left this in play. Arby's was doing more than that. I'll even take that out. So I have nine across Orange County that are Arby's locations. And I like to show this corporate tree structure. So I have company name, executive information, that city, state, zip, phone, and corporate tree. Now I do have the ability to switch this information up. If I'd like to see what executive title, for example, these uh, folks are under. I could certainly change that up. Just depends on what I would like to do. But let's focus on the corporate tree. So there's two ways to get to that corporate tree information from outside the record here. If you take the up arrow, it will take you to one record and one record only. And that would be the subsidiary or the ultimate parent. This will show you their entire organizational flow. Let's open up this record because I can also get to that same information from inside the record. So let's go here. I'll open up that corporate tree. Here's all the information regarding Arby's. So they, Arby's is their, their subsidiary, but notice they're actually owned by this Rourke Capital Group. It's a private equity company out of Atlanta, Georgia. They have some 42 subsidiaries total, almost 40,000 branches. There's a legend that runs across the top here. So you can always identify what that PV stands for as a private company. If you wanted to see these other subsidiaries, you can either scroll down or simply close this one. And there they all are. And I'm sure that you recognize many of those names. And I mention this because if I were by chance going to try and sell something to Arby's, 
wouldn't it be nice to be able to sell to all the RVs? Oh, and by the way, I might also be able to, to work a deal with all of the Carl's Juniors. And there's, a, there's this other little company uh, here. Where did they go? They're here somewhere. There it is, Hardee's. So no, you can certainly gain uh, a great deal of information about these businesses when viewing that corporate tree structure. So no, you can always take advantage of that. And then this is a great uh, typical record. You know, what you'd see when you go into any record, you're gonna have that address information, that phone information, in some cases, you'll have that website and those social links. We have those job listings through Indeed. There's that industry profile. There's that SIC code that you saw earlier for restaurants. That's the primary. I have a business profile in this case. We won't necessarily have a business profile on every single record, but wherever you can uh, glean information, you should do so. And when you can do it from this business profile, that's great information to have. I also have Google Maps embedded in here because we have that lot, latitude and longitude in the background. So I have that on each record. And this is a perfect example. So we just updated this record. Remember, we call them annually. We just updated this record in March. When we contacted them, they told us they had 23 employees at this location. Because remember, that is gonna go into the algorithm that creates this sales volume. We have that management directory, company news. We get this through Bing. And it's updated uh, as Bing captures information from these various sources. So this one was just uh, updated this morning at 8.30. Here was another one at 7.49. And then one last uh, Saturday. So notice there were several done last Saturday. You can even go down here and get to older articles. This is where I learned, you may not have seen it as I went through that list on the corporate tree, but Dunkin' Donuts is one of their uh, businesses that's under their umbrella. And I learned about that Dunkin' Donuts acquisition here. There's my uh, stock data. If I had any, we won't put stock data on a branch for one thing. We'll only have it either on that subsidiary or that ultimate parent in those cases where they're public. Some business expenditures, including some historical information. And then I have three additional sections. UCC filings. So if this business has taken out a loan and they, and, and here in, uh, gosh, dating back to 95, uh, if they've taken out a loan and put something up as collateral, that's captured in that UCC filing. Then the nearby businesses, Again, because we have that latitude and longitude in the background. And then, of course, a list of competitors. Goods, and it will always be those other restaurants. And if you needed to go into one of these, you could certainly do so. Uh, just depends on what you want. If you wanted to go and open up this Denny's record, you could get to that as well. So it just depends on what you might have a need for. I can always get back. And I can always quickly get back to the top of the record. I do want to point out, I mentioned earlier that you can update us on something that should change or be updated with this record. Let's for a moment imagine that you, in fact, know this, this particular uh, person that's the site manager there and that they told you they had 28 employees. You can tell us about that. Data feedback is the way you would do that. You select that, and that's going to open up this page. As it notes here, we're going to send this information through to those researchers, and based on the box or boxes that you put a check mark next to, and if there weren't uh, a selection here for you based on the update you'd like to let us know about, feel free to uh, freeform a note. If it's number of employees, you would simply put a check mark next to that and then put in that number 28. Fill this information out, submit it to us. We'll send you back a response 
immediately thanking you for that information. We'll also send you the confirmation of completion within seven to 10 business days. So know that any record can be updated. And I can always get back to my list. Of course, we know we were only looking at Arby's in this case. So these processes uh, work the same way, no matter what I do want to show you, we will, we will take Arby's out of the mix and I'll leave orange there and we'll just look at all restaurants uh, across the community. I want to show you another tool and that would be my map tool. And I'll use restaurants simply because I have so many of them. So instead of worrying about the county, I'm going to deselect that. And I'm going to use the map-based search tool. Whenever deploying this, be sure to make all your other selections first. And then open up the map. Here's my map. Now I'm just looking at all restaurants so far because I haven't told the system where I want to go yet. So it's always going to give you this view of the United States. You can come in here and you can do a physical address. I helped a gentleman who wanted to use the database and specifically this tool so that he could expand and get a sense of how many more customers he might add to his business if he's able to expand his delivery area. So you could put in a physical address here, you could put in city state, a zip code, just depends on what you want to do. Let's do this. Let's go with Carrollton. As you can see, I've been there before. I'll say go. It brings me right here. I'm gonna back out just a little bit so I can see just a little bit more of the area. I'll kind of center that. I have these various tools. I can draw my own shape. I can use a true radius. I can use some predetermined boundaries, even create a drive route. When drawing a shape or using this radius, the maximum distance you can go out is 150 miles. So I'll draw my own shape. Let's say that I want to, I want to, I want to look at this area. It's a single click to start it a single click to change direction. If you remember that game Etch-O-Sketch, it's kind of like that. I was never very good at that. I'll just go straight up this corridor. So I want to look in this area. Double click to finish the shape, and then it will calculate how many businesses match my criteria in that particular shape. If that's all I need, I can simply say done here. And as you can see, I'm ready to give you those 487 results. You can also, as I mentioned, do a true radius. So if you wanted to use that tool, this is exactly what, I'll show you exactly what I did for this gentleman. We of course used his physical address and that's what this bubble represented. So we'll select define radius. He wanted to expand his radius he was doing a delivery area of five miles. He wanted to expand that uh, to a total of 10. So at that point, simply select it, then expand. So you can see I'm already out to four miles uh, there. I'll just stop at six here. So this, this would represent that 10. Then we simply grab this again and did a donut hole. And I didn't do a perfect donut hole, but you get the idea. So in this area that I just drew, you simply exclude that new area and say, okay. So he'll only get the records for those businesses that match his criteria in this area. So of that 1,440 that we had originally, 659 of them will be deducted and as you can see, I'm ready to give you those 781. So know you can do that with the database. Here are some of those predetermined boundaries. If I wanted to look at the zip codes, for example, across the area, I could do that. And then it's just as simple as clicking in any of those zip codes that I want to. And they don't have to be necessarily next to each other. I can grab as many 
of these as I want. Once I'm done, whatever those results total, I'll get that here. So know that that is another tool. And then you can also, as I mentioned, create a drive route. So let's say that I wanted to go from, from uh, uh, Carrollton. We'll do Carrollton. And we're gonna go, oh, not to TZ though. Oh no. And we'll go, let's just go down to Dallas. And my buffer distance, the max I can go out is 15 miles. But please understand that that's 15 miles either east or west of the roadway that the system takes me down. So it's a total of 30, right? I'll say, show me those businesses that match my criteria and I'll go 0 0.2 for two blocks. So it'd be a total of four. And there it is. So from Carrollton all the way down here to Dallas, I have 198 results that match my criteria. If that's what I want, I can say done and then view those results. So it just depends on what you might need to get to for information, but know you can do that. It's a great way to use the database. So let's do this. We were talking about business expansion. Of course, maybe some of these businesses are the businesses that I am most interested in. I wanna give you a, a, an example of a gentleman who he was, he, his business is up in Minnesota and he builds uh, this beautiful uh, wood furniture out of, uh, lumber that he gets from up there in Minnesota. And he sells it a lot to uh, hotels, motels, some restaurants uh, across Minnesota. He's even got a few customers in South Dakota and North Dakota. He wanted to expand and get more leads that he could call on with businesses that might potentially be interested in, in purchasing his product. So what we did in his situation was we started fresh. I better go back to quick search and then come back to my advanced search, kind of clear everything out, make sure there's nothing still in there that I didn't clear out earlier. Then at this point in time, it was a matter of selecting the keyword search. Now, when we initially started this process, he wanted to just focus on hotels. So that's what I'll hotels. There's my all-inclusive for hotels and motels. And he was going to look at Minnesota, as well as North and South Dakota, and as well as Colorado. So at that point in time, he did want to use some filters in terms of, of sales volumes. So we grabbed some of these numbers. And then it was just a matter of, of being able to produce those uh, states because we already know what we're looking for, right? So then when you do that city state option, in this case, I'm only gonna do the state part, right? So Colorado was one of those states that he wanted. He also wanted Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay, well, I can fix that. I'll just scroll right down here. Come on, Minnesota. There's my Minnesota. And he wanted North and South Dakota. So where's my North Dakota? And there it is, and my South Dakota. So he wanted those four states included. And that was going to be as simple as his uh, information needed to be. So notice he has almost 2,000 businesses that matches his interest based on those sales volumes numbers. And you know, you can continue to add, if he wanted to add another category, look what that does to his number. So you can always add to, and he was going to save this search because he wanted to be able to come back to this after he developed some other 
searches as well. So here are those results. Once you have set up the system for us to be able to save your search, it was as simple as coming in here and naming it. Uh, but I haven't set up a save search in this, in this database through Carrollton but you certainly could. So he wanted to save this list because he was gonna come back to it at a later point in time. Now he also wanted to be able to identify those businesses uh, that also were, so you would save that, then revise your search. He was also going to look at some restaurants and he wanted to be able to do that with single uh, location as an option. So we would remove the hotels, go back to restaurants, search for that SIC code. He wanted to leave some of the uh, volumes as it relates to those sales volumes, but he wanted to add in those locations under headquarters branch that were single locations in those states. So we've got the four states, we're looking at those restaurants, and then it's just a matter of let's update that count. So you can see he's got 7,500 that match that criteria. And you could always, if, if that were maybe a little too large of a universe, you could always peel off some of the sales volume numbers as well. So notice how that got rid of a number of those, about two thirds of those. So again, just depends on what you wanna be able to do as it relates to creating that, those end results. So there's my, my, my records. And at that point in time, he was going to also kind of look at this from a charts perspective, because he did wanna get a sense of, and this is a great way to do that, those, breaks that down those cities, right? And then you can get that full report here. Notice that's 25 pages in length. So by saving that search, he doesn't have to re reproduce this and perhaps miss something, right? He's able to save it all in one place and get back to any of these tools as he needs them. So for him, it was going to be about being able to make some phone calls to these businesses uh, in those areas. So there's my list. And again, he was just planning on saving that. Any questions regarding the business information? Because we also helped him as it related to identifying people that might have interest in home decor. But I just want to make certain that, that we don't leave anything out as it might relate to business information. Any questions? Certainly feel free to ask any question. I'm going to go now then to the U.S. Consumer Lifestyles information. So to do so, select reference solutions. It brings me back to my homepage. There's the Carrollton, Texas Public Library's logo. And then you simply scroll down to that particular module and select it. So here's my consumer lifestyles data. Now on our business records, we're called verifying that information, which we do annually with those businesses. With consumers, certainly a little different process. We're not call verifying uh, 302 million people across the United States. We're gathering this information through a variety of sources. Some of them include uh, warranty card submissions that people have sent in on their new TV or on their electronics or, or their phone. Uh, certainly maybe their, maybe their appliances, maybe they've bought new appliances and they're, they're sending in those warranty cards. Surveys that people have completed, whether those surveys be uh, something that they've done online. I know I get a lot of surveys from travel companies because I travel across the United States so often. So I get that kind of survey request. Uh, 
certainly memberships that people have joined. I was not in the Consumer Lifestyles database when I first moved back into the city of Omaha. And I started buying my dog food at, at Petco. And because of that PALS membership card that I signed up for eventually, I ended up being recognized as a dog lover in the database. So we have a variety of different categories that we're following. And let's just take a look at some of those. And I would, I would go right from the quick search to the advanced search. You know, you can do a name search. The, the database what not set up. It's a marketing database. It's not a, a people finder database. So I would go right into advanced search because I want to be able to tell a system. In this case, what we were doing for this gentleman regarding uh, his furniture sales is we were looking at the information. He wanted to start with just Minnesota. He was also considering, because I showed him the map-based search tool, so he was also uh, looking at perhaps maybe doing some areas around certain communities in North Dakota and South Dakota, but not necessarily blanket the entire states. So at that point in time, you can simply come down here to these lifestyle selections, and I always encourage people, look at one per household. That way you don't get multiple records for one address. This is going to give you one name, the head of household, and uh, that address. So what he wanted to use the lifestyle indicators for were those people that were interested in home improvement and decor. So if I select this plus symbol, it will open up that record. And here are those home decorating and furnishing lovers, right? So he wanted just this group, not the do-it-yourselfers, but just this group. And then it was just a matter of, of doing either city-state or maybe you could do several counties, he wanted to be able to do several counties in the Minnesota area. Oh, what I'll do is I'll just pull up the city because he was in Brainerd, uh, Minnesota, a community I'm very familiar with because I used to go fishing there. Is that it? Nope, it is. Uh, And it was, let me look that up. I know it's not. Let me see what that is. I had that written down here for him. Oh, that's why. I wanted Brainerd. And there it is. So all you have to do is identify that particular area, community, whatever it might be, along with that number of contacts. He also wanted to look at that home decorating and furnishing. And he also wanted to include estimated home income. So we're getting this through the Census Bureau and then we're making adjustments to that information. So he wanted to be able to start out in this hundred range and just go up a few categories here to get those folks that would be able to probably afford his furniture that he makes. So out of that area, and I'm just looking in Brainerd, I've got 640 people that fall into that partic those particular categories. So I can view those results. And again, I can chart this information just like I did on the business side. If I select that chart option, notice I've already got those home incomes listed. So it's going to give me that estimated home value. He didn't care so much about that as he did the zip codes that they fell into. So I've got those two zip codes with the number of records that apply to that. 
Again, you can save this. It just depends on what you want to be able to do. He was just looking at one area, but he was eventually going to be looking at other communities and he would ultimately end up with a much larger group. Now notice, it does state that the telephone numbers displayed may be on the do not call list and should not be used for phone solicitation. And I would add to that, unless you get a clean list. And by clean, I mean, you have to run that through the do not call registry to get a list of people that you could in fact call against. So of this 640, there may be only 200 people that you could actually call because the others are all on the do not call list. So you get the idea. You can either have us do that for you. There is a charge for that. Or you could download these records and then send them to the do not call registry. They also will charge. With us, you don't have to download the list. You just tell us the parameters that are important to you. And then we would go out and do the search in our system and get back to you regarding those totals uh, and what that cost would be to run that against the do not call list. So we can certainly do that for you. This is what their information is going to look like. So I would have the address information here, everything that we have seen about this household, Sarah appears to be married. We didn't call verify that was Sarah, but everything we've seen points to the fact that she's probably married, been in this home for 21 years. There's that census information that we're getting from that block group and track information. And then we make some adjustments to these numbers based on what we're seeing in areas. And then there are those lifestyle indicators. So the only reason this record came in was because of the home decorating and furnishing. In fact, let me share this with you. This will make this seem uh, more specific. Notice we have this scoring system in play. It's zero through nine. We will only show you records of people who score a six or higher. So they have to be active in the category in which you've selected. So, this group of 640, there are probably many more people that might be into home decorating and furnishing, but they're not active enough. That's why this group came up in my results. So you can see from this record, even though there are other areas that she or the family may have interested in, interest in, for example, fitness, we could do another search say for fitness, this record may not show up because they don't score in that six to nine range. So no, this can be some great information for those businesses that want to be able to work with consumers to get them some information about their product or service that they offer in uh, their community or in that area. This can be tremendous data. And I can use all the tools that we talked about with the business database. I can put them on the heat map if I'd like to, get a sense of that density in that area. I can always do that. So there's my community of Brainerd. I can always do that. Again, I can print this off. I can make it part of a PowerPoint presentation and I can download this information. So if I wanted to be able to download this information, maybe I'm gonna be sending a mailer to these folks. I can certainly do that as it notes here, I have the ability to download those 400. So I can go through those pages and grab those records and do that download just like I did with my business information.
So no, there are no restrictions. Those tools all work the same way, no matter which module you might come into. Now he was also interested in information. So let's do this. I'm gonna select my reference solutions. He was also interested in, even though we don't have any information about people's interests, he was also wanting to know about new movers and new homeowners. So with that, with that said, we also looked at that particular information as well. You can open up any of these modules. Again, go right to that advanced search. It allows you to certainly do more. So in that area, you could always do move distance and time frame. So if you didn't want to know about people perhaps who've moved across town, you could say, hey, show me people that have moved from uh, let's say uh, at least 50 miles away. And then we can always say how many miles, let's say, let's do 2,550 miles. It will always default to the last six months. You could do it as recently as last week or within the last year. Let's do it in the last three months. Let's do this and I'm just gonna grab, I'll grab, I'll grab this. We'll just do Minnesota because he was also going to look in the Minneapolis area, which is Hennepin County. We'll grab that. And so we've told the system, don't show us anybody who's, who's moved, maybe moved from one of the smaller communities uh, around the, the uh, uh, city to, uh, so we went with 50 miles up to 2,550 in the last three months. Notice I have a total of 2,126 in the last three months who've moved into Hennepin County. Now I haven't added any other uh, qualifiers, right? I could, I could do estimated income again. Let's grab a few of those. I can certainly grab some of these ranges. What does that do to my total? So now I'm at 580, as you can see. So as you put in these additional filters, maybe he wants to identify those people who are confirmed homeowners or probable homeowners. I could do that as well. So of that 580, 248 of them match as a confirmed or probable homeowner. Let's take a look at these records. Again, we give you that same message about any of the phone numbers that might be displayed here. Oftentimes you won't find phone numbers. As I mentioned with the new movers, new homeowners, we're getting this through our license agreement with the United States Postal Service's national change of address. So rarely do people put phone numbers on the national change of address information that they're submitting to the post office. And by the way, if someone has moved in, uh, say from internationally into the Minneapolis area, for example, there is a uh, change of an international change of address that they can fill out once they've gotten to the States and submit which is how they're going to get obviously their their mail sent to them if it's coming from overseas. So they can certainly do that as well. But I limited mine to 2,600 miles. So in this case, let's look at Joshua's record here. I've got that address information. He moved from 1,454 miles away to come into the Minneapolis area. There's some of that estimated home income and home value based again on that census block group and track. And there's an estimated age, not that he's necessarily that age, but in this area based on the census, that's what they're seeing in that, in that range. So know you've got that kind of information. This is the extent of the record. I, I don't have any other additional information other than opening the map. 
So I don't know if, if Joshua might be interested in home furnishings, but he is relatively new to the community. So he might have a need for that kind of, of uh, information because maybe he's considering, uh, his, maybe he's in a larger home now and he's considering a, uh, buying some furniture. Great audience to, again, be able to get in front of, depending on what your business me needs may be. And also easy to get there. Any questions regarding the business or any of our, our consumer information? It doesn't look like anything's come in. Know that obviously we are recording this. You can go back to this recording at any point in time that you'd like. All of the processes and tools that I've showed you in the US business database or in the consumer lifestyles and, and certainly in the new movers, new homeowners, it all works the same. So uh, certainly take advantage of any of these modules that you might have some interest in and know that you can apply those exact same tools or steps in order to generate the kind of information that would be beneficial for your business. Lydia, I think that covers everything. Do you have any questions? I don't. Um, I just... I, I'm always amazed by the possibilities in reference solutions. And I've, again, learned something new. <laughs> um, thank you for your expertise to guide us through this rich resource and to possibly enhance business expansion for area businesses and people attending this. Thank Can you. Be used anywhere in the United States. Yes. And thank you to our attendees for being here. We'll share some links in chat that you might find to be helpful. And we hope that you or someone you know will consider attending our third webinar in this series, Discovering Employment Opportunities Using Reference Solutions, happening July 12th, with registration starting June 21st. We invite you to visit Carrollton Public Library in person, online, and through social media. We're here for you. Thank you and have a good week. Thank you, Lydia. You're welcome. Thank you, Bill. Goodbye. Bye-bye.